And joining us now on our Book Talk segment, great to welcome one of the uh, co-authors of a really interesting book. I'm sure it's going to be uh, fascinating to most people, if not everybody. It should be. It's called Proof of God, the Shocking True Answer to the World's Most Important Question. We're joined today by uh, Ptolemy Tompkins, and uh, he has uh, written uh, previous bestsellers called Proof of Heaven and Proof of Angels. And uh, this is about uh, his uh, uh, interviews with another man, Bernard Hayes, who uh, they had some interesting conversations. That's what the book is about. We'll find out about it right now. He's based, I believe, up in New York. Is that where you are now, Ptolemy? I'm in, I'm in an island off the coast of Maine. Oh, Maine. Okay. Very good. Yeah, I know you, yeah. you were in New York for a surprised. while, weren't you? Yeah. I was. You were the, actually the editor, yeah. I, I should say, of a, of a magazine that was in our house uh, uh, growing up for, for many years. My mother uh, enjoyed the magazine, my grandmother too, Guideposts, which was uh, a very uh, very important magazine for a long time. Well, when I first started at Guideposts, I thought it was a small religious tract received by a few people. And when I learned it was this colossally large magazine received by all sorts of people, largely in the middle of the country, not to people in... Not too many people in New York City or Los Angeles received it, but uh, yeah, it was this sort of strange, invisible force reaching all sorts of places, and it was a lot of fun to work at. Yeah, I grew up in uh, Long Island, and we would go into the city uh, periodically to uh, Marvel Collegiate Church. Of course, Norman Vincent Peale was uh, really? heavily involved wow. with that magazine, so we used to go Absolutely. see him uh, quite yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Wow. Great, great, great church. I, I assume it's still there. I would think it's it's still going strong. But anyway, that's a, that's a different. Uh, it is. It's, it's it's tied up with the name of Donald Trump these days, which is problematic. Is that but right? It I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know since Norman Vincent Peale died, I believe uh, Dr. Caliandro did it for a long time, but I don't know who's in charge of it now. So anyway, we'll. Uh, we'll... Um, he is, and boy, you are tied in. Yes, exactly. He's still there. Okay. God bless him. He must be up there in age because he was there when I was a kid <laughs> as a backup minister. <laughs> I had no idea I was speaking to a guidepost expert. When yeah, I well, I'm not an expert, but we, we, went, we went to Marvel Collegiate uh, quite often. So, uh, we, we, uh, well, we, comparatively uh, speaking, we certainly are. <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit about this book. Obviously, you've written the two previous uh, books, Proof of Heaven, Proof of Angels. I guess the, the natural progression would be Proof of God. So uh, talk a little bit about will, how you, how you will, got this book together. I will um, give you a little footnote to Proof of Heaven. <coughs> Proof of Heaven is by Eben Alexander <coughs> and um, had a pretty large readership, but I, in fact, ghost wrote that book, right. so I don't want to take full credit for it, but actually that's how Bernie and I got together, because a mutual friend of ours had told Bernie about the work I'd done on Proof of Heaven, and um, Bernie had written uh, two previous books, and they were very interesting, but they were a little bit wonky. He had a message he wanted sort of to get out to the world, but being an astrophysicist, he tends to express himself a little bit wonkily, and he wanted to attach himself to a, well quote-unquote, popular authors, so that his message could be boiled down and got out to a larger audience. So that's the project going on here. And, and he, of course, uh, you as, said, is a, a scientist, so he approached uh, this as a scientific uh, study to try and a, find scientifically that God exists. So that, was his, that was his mission, right? Well, the good thing about him, because if I wrote a book called Proof of God, well, it wouldn't carry much weight, because I'm just a writer, and writers, as we know, don't know much to start with. (laughs) But Bernie has uh, impeccable scientific credentials, so when he says God exists, it has some weight to it, because he is a full-on, bona fide, actual scientist, so it carries a little bit of surprise value, because most scientists will tell you that... uh, God is an unnecessary theory in the universe we live in. Bernie disagrees with that strongly. Yeah, I always you know, heard growing up in school, you know, scientists say they can't prove it or see it. It doesn't exist. So it is exactly. you know, unusual to hear a scientist exactly. say there is a God. So I think more and more saying it now, but it used to be they didn't believe it because they couldn't prove it. It wasn't there. Exactly. And that is programmed into us from a very early age that we live in a world that could have just arisen just as a matter of chance, sort of chaotically, like the Big Bang occurred 14 billion some years ago, and that could have just happened, and then, um, you know, suns could have formed, planets could have formed that uh, 
you know, circled around those planets. Earth showed up, had a bunch of water on it. Uh, <laughs> you know, some uh, atoms and molecules got together, and lo and behold, they formed the first, uh, you know, living cell. And Well, that could have just happened, and, and so on and so forth, as we were taught in elementary school and high school. And it's programmed into us, and it's completely wrong. Even I know there's a lot of questions everybody has when you know. Hopefully, eventually we get to, to to meet the man upstairs of you know why questions. But you just look around at nature and you say, well, no man could have created this. It had to be something better than us or bigger than us. So there's always been proof there, well, but it, I guess it, nobody it, wanted it to admit seems, it. It seems like a it seems like a natural thing to think, and a few hundred years ago, it's what everybody thought. But then the scientific revolution occurred, and it became popular to look around and say, oh, you know, it's just, you know, the uh, the patterns on a butterfly's wing or on a beautiful bird or, the, you know, the strange symmetry of a tree and all this kind of stuff. Eh, it was just natural selection. So nothing special to see here. Move on. No big <laughs> questions. And that just flattened the universe, and it's totally wrong, as uh, Bernie demonstrated to me in very ABC concrete terms. Yeah, you talk in the book, uh, we've heard the term, uh, I guess maybe, I don't know how long ago it came out, the Higgs uh, boson particle, whatever it is, the God particle, whatever you want to call it, that uh, kind of yeah, maybe Higgs started Higgs this whole yeah. movement, right, in science that there is a God, or maybe a God, according to science. Well, you know, the Higgs boson, um, all particles have fields association. A particle can't exist without a field. And the most important thing about the Higgs boson was that if it existed, it had a field associated with it. And that field um, accomplished what scientists have been looking for for a long time, which is the element which creates inertia, which creates the illusion of solid matter in the, in the universe. Because when a particle speeds up, it encounters inertia. It's sort of like... Uh, shooting something into a vat of honey. It sort of slows it down. And the search was on for what that universal honey was that slowed things down and thus created the illusion of mass and hence solid matter in our world. And so the Higgs boson was the particle that was, was associated with the Higgs field, and it was then given the disastrous name of the God particle, right. which is a terrible name because what it does is it demotes God down to being a part of our world. And standard theology states that God is not a part of our world. He's the creator of our world. He's a part and above from it. You start naming things the God particle, and you bring down, bring God down into our world, which does a disservice to our world and to God. And again, this book... I hope I didn't get too wonky there. No, no, I, I, I found it fascinating. And again, this book is a, a kind of the conversations between you and Bernard Haish uh, out in, I believe, San Francisco over several uh, uh, periods of time. And uh, we'll let the audience, you know, hopefully read about it, uh, the, the details of it. But uh, did you get more of an insight? Obviously, you've had, you know, the background writing for guideposts and all that. But I guess you talk a little bit about in the book, your own personal life. You, you changed a bit in your thought, right? Well, in fact, I was just separating from my wife during the writing of this book, which, um, and I wrote the, most of the book in transit, sort of floating around looking for a new place to live, and this is problematic for a minute, but like most writers, I, uh, I figured out a way to use this unfortunate situation as a framing device for the book, because... Um, when you get divorced, what you're doing is disrupting what you thought was going to be a coherent story. Yeah. You meet a person you love and you live happily after. Um, that story gets um, um, messed up, and suddenly you no longer live in a coherent universe that has a beginning, a middle, and an end, like the beginning is you go along before you meet the person of your dreams, then you meet the person of your dreams, and you're happily ever after. All that goes down the drain, and you live in a world where nothing really seems to mean anything anymore. And I thought, wait a minute, this, this emotional state that I'm living in sort of parallels um, the larger state that all of us live in, because all of us live in a world that's chaotic and has no meaning, and has no story attached to it because 
we've been um, taken in by the scientific materialist model of the world. So lo and behold, I had a personal framing device for the wonky material that I wanted to get across in the book. So the book is sort of half my bumbling around feeling sorry for myself that I can't <laughs> find a true home to live in. And um, be sort of plugging that in to uh, Ber- Bernie's wonky material about uh, what science really has to say about God. Yeah. I don't know if it worked or not, but it was. Uh, no, it was I gave it a good try. Very effective. And uh, again, I know we have limited time today, but uh, Proof of God, the shocking true answer to the world's most important question, is the full title of the book. Uh, Ptolemy Tompkins, along with Bernard Haish, and uh, very thought provoking and interesting. Uh, uh, narrative and uh, tell me, uh, do you have a website you can direct people to? I know they want to get more information about the book. Well, I haven't updated it in about uh, eight years, but I thought with all these interviews, it's time to uh, get it back into shape. So hopefully, it'll be in shape soon. It's TollemyTompkins.com. And it's put out by Howard Trade Paperback, available at all the uh, bookstores, I'm sure, Amazon and all that. We'll put a link on our website as well. But tell me, pleasure talking to you. Hopefully we can do it again, and uh, thanks for being with us today. A lot of fun. Thank you. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, We can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or DougMilesMedia.com.